Ahoy hoy, this is Michaela from Team Retro. We like retro games, we like roguelikes, and we like the devices that bring them to us. So in this video, I'm showcasing a PS Vita 1000 that my friend Jeremy got from a friend of his. And this device is well taken care of. It's in very good condition. Usually pre-owned PS Vitas are usually very banged up with scratches on the screen and on the rear touchpad, but this one's in pretty good shape. And the PS Vita is well known for being one of the very first devices to have a really sharp OLED screen, which they actually discontinued and replaced with an LED screen when they updated this model to the PS Vita 2000. Here you can see my PS Vita 2000 side by side with the 1000, and you could just see the screen is just not as nice as the original model. I'm going to go into the content manager app really quick just so you can see a black screen on both systems and you could see the black on the OLED model is just much more black and it's a little bit more of a lighter gray on the LED model. Now when I went to Retro World Expo, Jeremy sat on the panel with me and he was a really good sport in doing so. So in this video, I'm going to put custom firmware on this system for him. And in doing so, I'm going to also teach you how to do it. Now before we get started, you do need a proprietary PS Vita memory card. If you have the PS Vita 1000 model and you are looking to install custom firmware on it. However, if you have the PS Vita 2000 slim model, you actually don't need a memory card because there is some internal storage on that device. With the memory card installed, we're going to power on the unit and get ourselves to the home screen. And this video is just going to be a step by step on how to get from stock firmware to custom firmware. We're not going to showcase gameplay or things you can do with that custom firmware in this video. We just want to get you there. But by the end of this video, you will have custom firmware installed on your Vita and you will be able to start taking advantage of it. So here I am on my Windows computer. You will unfortunately need to be running Windows in order to install this firmware. So let's start by downloading Final H Encore at time of recording around version 1.92. It may be higher if you are watching this in the future. I'll include a link in the description so you can download this file to your computer. I'll also include a link to this program QCMA. This will download the drivers you need to connect the PlayStation Vita to your computer. I ran into problems using Sony's official driver, so I used this method instead. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and run it, click your language, and just go ahead and click through the prompts and install the program. Just make sure you leave Win USB driver checked. You don't have to do anything custom, just download and install the program. It's also going to prompt you to install the device driver installation wizard. Just go ahead and do that as well, and then run QCMA once it's installed. Once you get to the settings screen, just click OK to close out. Now you can use 7-Zip or WinRAR to extract the final HE folder. And once you do, go into it and open up the final he.exe. And there's a couple things we're going to do here. We're going to click to trim it to 7 megabytes. And we're going to click this arrow on the left and check off Vita Deploy. All right, let's go ahead and use the USB charging cable to connect the PlayStation Vita to the computer. And with QCMA running, once you connect the USB drive to the computer, the program should automatically recognize it. And you could just go ahead and click Let's Go. And it's going to take a few minutes for the program to download all the files that it needs to download. So at this point, you can take a bathroom break, get a beverage of choice, and we'll come back when it's all done. And once it finishes, we can go right back to the Vita. In the Content Manager app, we're going to click Copy Content. And then just give the Vita a few seconds to connect to the PC. Once it connects, we're going to click PC to PS Vita System. Then Applications. Then PS Vita. And then we'll click both H Encore and Vita Deploy. 
and finally click copy. Click OK to confirm and the files will copy over to the Vita. Again, this may take a few minutes, so just be patient. It'll copy over just fine. All right, now that the files are copied over, we can go ahead and hit the Home button to exit out of Content Manager. And back on your home screen, you'll notice that H Encore and Vita Deploy have been installed. So let's go ahead and disconnect our cable. We don't need that right now. And let's boot up H Encore right on the Vita. Now it'll give you a warning that you won't earn trophies. That's okay. Go ahead and click yes. And then you're going to see some pretty colors. This is normal. Just let it run. And when you get to this screen, it is going to look a little intimidating, but all you have to do here is click the X button and you will install the exploit. And when it's done, it'll close itself out and bring you right back to the home screen. Now let's take a look at what installing this exploit did for us. So we can go into the regular settings app and this new option opened up called Henkaku settings. So go into that and we need to enable unsafe homebrew because even though we have the exploit running, it is temporary. So we need to go ahead and make this permanent. And we're going to do that by running Vita Deploy, which was the second app that we installed. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to downgrade the firmware on the Vita to 3.65 because that's the last version of the firmware with the permanent mod. So we're going to click Install Custom OS and Quick 3.65 Install. At this point, it's going to attempt to download the updater. So if your Vita is not connected to the internet, you are going to need to connect to Wi-Fi. Actually, in one of my past videos, I did just have a viewer comment on the fact that all my Wi-Fi networks are named after Star Trek The Next Generation. So let me just take the opportunity to thank that commenter for their observation of my trekkiness. Once everything is downloaded, you will end up on this screen. Go ahead and click X to confirm. Just keep in mind all the warnings. You also may hit a roadblock if your factory firmware is too high. The exploit may not work if that's the case. But in most cases, your factory firmware should be low enough that you're good to go. Just keep in mind the warning that if something goes wrong, there is a potential danger of breaking your Vita. Just remember that any attempt to run unsigned code does come with those risks. Once you accept, the system will automatically downgrade to 3.65, so you actually don't have to do anything at this point. Just let it install and restart. Once we get back to the home screen, just go into settings to verify that the software downgrade was successful. You'll notice Henkaku settings is still there, which means that the exploit was run on reboot. And in system information, it says 3.65 with the custom firmware characters. So now that we have the permanent exploit installed, we're going to actually use this SD to Vita micro SD adapter to expand our file storage without needing to spend an exorbitant amount of money on proprietary Vita cards. And when we're done, you'll be able to put ROMs, PS Vita games, and PSP games, as well as native PS1 games on this system. However, this goes into the game cart, so we are going to lose support for physical carts. Now, during the course of the firmware downgrade, we lost the Vita Deploy app, so we need to connect our Vita to the computer again just so we can reinstall it. And just as before, run H Encore, make sure you click Vita Deploy, and go into Content Manager on the Vita. 
The only difference you're going to find with running the tool this time is that the H Encore file is now a corrupt file that we can't install. So you're only going to install Vita Deploy. We do not need to run H Encore again. And then just go ahead and let that file copy over and come back to the Vita when it's all done. Now that Vita Deploy is reinstalled, let's jump right in. And we're going to format the memory card that's in the SD2 Vita. So let's scroll down to miscellaneous settings and format a storage device. The target should already be set to SD2 Vita, but if it's not, make sure you switch it to that and then just go ahead and click format. It'll seem like the system is doing nothing or hangs up, but give it a minute. You'll get a notification that says formatted and we can move on. Once you get that pop up, go ahead and power down the unit and turn it back on. Back on the home screen, let's go into system settings, then go into devices, and we're going to check to use the YAMT driver. Once we've hit that checkbox, we're going to exit out of our settings and we're going to restart the unit again. Once we're back on the home screen, we're going to go back into the Vita Deploy app. Now we're going to go into the file manager, which is essentially Vita Shell. So here we need to copy the entire contents of the PlayStation Vita memory card to the SD2 Vita. So you're going to go into UXO and you're going to copy all of these files except the Sclio Trash folder. Hit triangle and then hit move. And then you're going to go into UMAO. That's our SD2 Vita card. Hit triangle and hit paste. Now at this point I ran into a roadblock and I kept getting this error message. So I had to do some research and try to copy these files off camera. Turns out what the problem was is there were already games installed on this system. So the app folder was not moving over to the new partition because Vita Shell can't move large files that way. So what I did to fix it was I went back to the home screen and deleted all of the games. And then I was able to copy everything over just fine. So if you run into this problem, delete your games, finish this video, and then reinstall them when you're done. Once everything is copied over, we're going to go back to Devices, Storage Devices, and we're going to change UXO to SD2 Vita and UMAO to Default. And then we're going to go ahead and restart our system, and when the PlayStation Vita restarts, it will be using the SD2 Vita as the primary storage. Alright, all the hard work is done, so the rest of this video is just going to be installing programs that will be beneficial to use this exploit. So if you go into Vita Shell, there's actually an app downloader. So I would download Vita Shell, and we're also going to download a couple of other helpful things. We're going to download the Vita Homebrew Browser. We're going to download the Adrenaline app, PKGJ as well as the Vita Save Manager, the Custom Themes Manager, and the Registry Editor. So let's go ahead and scroll back to the top and click to download the selected apps. So once everything downloads, it's going to jump us right back into Vita Shell so that we can manually install these VPKs one at a time. And so here's the list of downloaded VPKs. So we're just going to select each one, click X to install, X to proceed. And unfortunately, there's no batch way to do this. You have to do it individually for each VPK.
And then when you're done, you can hit square to select each of these VPKs. And we can just go ahead and hit triangle to delete them because once they're installed, we no longer need the VPKs. Then when you head to the home menu, you'll see that all of these were installed. I would actually recommend putting them in a folder just so that you have them separated from your actual games. So let's actually go into ITLS Enzo and install the full ITLS package. This is gonna fix some plugin errors and it's gonna reopen access to the PlayStation Store because we are on lower firmware. So normally it would prompt you to update, but that'll fix it. And the system will again reboot when it's done. Now let's jump into Vita Shell, press start, and switch the select button to FTP. Hit circle, and then hit select, and the FTP address will come up. So let's bounce to our computer and leave this running. Back on the computer, let's open up WinSCP and type in the IP address that you see on the Vita under host name. Type 1337 as the port number and make sure the file protocol is set to FTP. And then go ahead and click log in. You don't need to provide a username or a password. You could just skip those. Now that we're connected, let's install the Vita version of RetroArch. And you can get that right from RetroArch.com. Just download the VPK. I'm also going to provide a link in the description for Auto Plugin 2. Let's download that VPK. And in WinSCP, we're going to go into UXO. We'll go to Downloads. And we're going to drag those two VPKs right over to the system. Now this process will take a little bit longer because you're transferring wirelessly versus over USB cable, so just be patient. Another program I recommend but is completely optional is Adrenaline Bubbles Manager. So this will let you install PSP ROMs right to the Vita's home screen. So we'll drag that over, same as before. Once everything is transferred back in Vita Shell, we can go into UXO and we can go into downloads and we can install the VPKs just like we did with the ones that we had earlier. RetroArch is a bit of a beefy program, so that one will take just a little bit longer. And once everything is installed, you can hit square to select the files and delete the VPKs just like we did before. Back on the home screen, you'll see that our programs are installed here. So let's go into Auto Plugin 2. And there's only one thing we really need with this program. So once we get to a menu, you're going to click Vita Plugins. Please make sure you're connected to a network because we're going to install plugins. And we're looking for something very specific. So we're going to scroll down until you get to no NPDRM. Now you want to make sure you get the official one. There are two versions here. You want the one that says the official flow. And then once you go ahead and install that, you'll be able to run PlayStation Vita ROMs no problem. Go ahead and press start to exit and your Vita will reboot one last time. Just make sure you read the warning before you click OK just in case you run into troubles. We need to do one run of RetroArch just to create the file system, so let's open that now. And once you boot up RetroArch, you can just go ahead and exit out of it. Ignore any warnings that may pop up. The only reason we fired this up for this video was just to create the file system. So the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to go into Vita Shell and we're going to connect again to FTP by pressing select. And we're going to go into WinSCP on our Windows machine yet again. And we're going to go into UXO and we're going to go into Data, RetroArch, and System. And here's where we're going to put all of our BIOS files. 
Unfortunately, due to copyright, I can't tell you where to get those files, but head over to Google and you'll get what you need. And this process is going to take a little bit of time. So just go ahead and leave your Vita plugged into power and leave it connected to FTP and just let it do its thing. And that's the last real step that you need to get yourself up and running with custom firmware on the PlayStation Vita. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here. And in future videos, we're going to take a look at a PS Vita with custom firmware and see what potential it really has as a retro gaming device. But for now, we got you from stock to custom firmware. And until I can get that video out, you have what you need to install custom firmware and start playing around with your PS Vita. And once the BIOS files are installed, you should be able to get RetroArch up and running, no problem. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or thoughts on a modded PS Vita, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And please feel free to continue the conversation in Budget Aquaman's Discord channel. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, please be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye for now, and don't stop believing.